Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Geo Reviews Movies. 2022 had a lot of stinkers, but also a lot of great movies, and here are my top 10. Coming in at number 10 on my top 10 movies of 2022 list is The Menu, because of the way that the comedy is used so smart throughout this film. Every joke is just, it takes a shot at literally whatever you want in the movie. Rich white people, Bitcoin boys, you have mm, review critics like me, you have whatever you can see, people that don't even care about food. Everyone is treated in such a bad manner in this film that Ralph Fiennes' performance in this movie is, I feel like he should get nominated for an Oscar. It's, he's so villainous in this role. And Han Chao as the maitre d', she is so menacing in this. It's the exact opposite of her role in The Whale. Director Mark Mylod's experience with directing a lot of episodes of Successions. His tone with the sarcasm, the dark humor, all of that is a perfect match for this film. And his direction and the cinematography is both dreary but also beautiful to look at in the same time. It meshes well with the overall tone of the film. It was a very neat surprise to catch on a Friday night and if you missed the opportunity to watch it in theaters, it's streaming now on HBO Max. I would definitely recommend this film. Coming in at number 9 on my list is Tar. When you talk about the best performances of 2022, you can't go long without bringing up Kate Blanchett in Tar. When an actor is at the top of her game, that you forget that this character is not based on a real person, but they persuade you with the conversations they have in this film. It starts off with having a live interview in front of a sold out crowd just listing off accomplishments, but it's directed so well, you're intrigued, it's written so well, has you guessing whatever is going to happen next. It's someone's search for perfection and what she will do to get it. It comes off mysterious, but it also doesn't feed you the information how you want to find out. It leaves you thinking after you've left the film. Given that Kate Blanchett has already won two Oscars, I feel like she's a heavy favorite for the Best Actress Oscar. She is just that good in this film. Sadly, this movie did tank at the box office, so not a lot of people have seen it. But for those that have, I feel like they share the same experience I did. Especially because I enjoyed this movie in an empty theater. But I also feel like that also enhanced my experience significantly. Anyways, it should be streaming on VOD now if you do want to check out this film. I highly recommend it. Coming in at number 8 on my list is Ambulance. What is there to say about Ambulance except that it's Michael Bay's latest action explosive filled adventure. It wouldn't be as great as it is without its over the top Jake Gyllenhaal performance. Especially with the dialogue in this film, it kind of makes his character over the top, but for this type of film, you need a character like that. It's If it's not him singing Sailing by Christopher Cross and getting his turtleneck ruined by fire extinguisher foam, he's so over the top in this movie and I was here for every second of it and the heart that Yaha Abdul Mateen the second gives, it kind of gives you a reason why you're rooting for two people that would rob a bank and murder innocent civilians basically. And the man to give all the credit to is Michael Bay and his luxurious drone shots. I'm not kidding you when I tell you half this movie is practically drone shots, but they're filmed in such a fun way that it doesn't even bother you. It has a couple ridiculous moments, but it's filmed so well that you have no choice but to enjoy the ride. The cartel pulls up at one point, bank robberies, doing a surgery through FaceTime in the back of an ambulance. It's some of the most ridiculous top-notch fun I've had in an IMAX theater this year and I would highly recommend this film. Elvis is a hard movie for me to describe because as much as I don't care for Tom Hanks character in this movie, it isn't fair to say that Austin Butler and Baz Luhrmann aren't a match made in heaven. With him looking the part of Elvis, portraying him so elegantly, and Baz behind the camera and filming it as chaotic and beautiful as it can be, it's fireworks in every scene. Now I wouldn't consider myself the biggest Baz Luhrmann fan. I appreciate The Great Gatsby for what it was. Romeo plus Juliet was over the top as well, but I guess with the story of Elvis, it feels correct for him to be behind the camera. And the way Austin Butler is transformed into Elvis Presley, I'd say he should be nominated for an Oscar. The costumes are ripped right out of the history books and it's shot so elegant. It's a wild roller coaster and that's why it's number 7 on my list. It would probably be higher if Tom Hanks was removed from the movie or just a little bit of his scenes cut down. His character just takes me out of the movie as a whole. But otherwise, Elvis is my number 7 ranked movie of 2022. And coming in at number 6 on my list is none other than Jordan Peele's third feature film, Nope. 
I know it's not a hot take to say how talented Jordan Peele is, but the things he's been able to accomplish throughout his career so far is pretty astounding. Especially when you look at Nope. Between the beautiful cinematography by Voigt Van Hoytema and the great dialogue and shot scenes by Peele, he has some great scenes in this film that really make you uneasy. For example, the scene that the UFO eats that whole town of people and it takes a good look inside the stomach and you just hear their screams, you hear all the yelling, you see them being digested, it's pretty haunting. And then those people get dropped on top of a house and it's just raining blood from the sky and it's all shot so beautiful your jaw is on the floor. The trailer for this film is also a tale as old as time when it comes to Peel movies. Everyone says it shows too much in the trailer, but there's so much that catches you off guard in this movie, it's kind of hard to say that. And then they say it's a ripoff of Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, but Peel came out and said that Spielberg is one of his mentors. He looks up to him, and who wouldn't direct him nowadays? He's been killing movies for the last 30 years. He's a legend. The talent that he's able to bring out of Daniel Kaluuya is like nothing else. All the movies he's done with him, he always brings his A game. His rough, his rigid persona is the exact opposite of his sister in the movie, played by Kiki Palmer. While she is so charismatic, she just steals the show in every scene she's in. This one's definitely one you have to see twice, just like all his other films, to truly understand and appreciate it. This movie is so off the walls, it's definitely in my top 10, and it's my number 6 movie of the year. And number 5 on my list is none other than Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Pinocchio is probably the most visually appealing animated film this year yeah but the stop motion in this movie it's something to look at because it's such a dark twist in this film the visuals that del toro was able to pull off with such a great voice cast it makes it such a gut-wrenching and beautiful story that you don't want it to end a creative difference that they made in this movie that I was a huge fan of was the fact that they placed it during World War I in the middle of the rise of fascist Italy. It's like a beautiful story of how the creation of monsters is made by our society and the brainwashing of children to join the war against their will. But then it's also a look at the creation of life by creating this wooden toy while Geppetto was drunk and he moves like a monster. He sort of resembles Frankenstein in the beginning. He he barely knows how to walk, his bolts and nuts are all over his body because he works in a workshop so he's just throwing stuff together just to make a new son. It's really a haunting imagery that they pull off in this movie. Y you can just tell that this was a passion project of Guillermo del Toro for years. You could see how much heart and love went into every second of this and that's why it breaks my top 5 of 2022. This movie is something else. It's so great. And coming in at number 4 is none other than Top Gun Maverick. What's there to say about a sequel that takes place 36 years after its original film? Other than it's a badass and an emotional joyride led by none other than the last great action star of our generation, Tom Cruise. Not just an emotional spectacle, but also so much action on the big screen. I had the pleasure of seeing this in a Dolby cinema. When the engines take off, you're just blasted in the face with all these thrusters. And then the emotional pulls with obviously you have Rooster's son played by Miles Teller. Val Kilmer makes an appearance, which also has to do with his real life disease he's currently going through. It's an emotional joyride that pats a punch and it's why we go to the movies. I don't blame Tom Cruise for making this go to theaters because this would not hit the same watching it on Paramount Plus which it is available to stream now if you haven't had the chance to see this masterpiece I recommend watching this and coming in at number three on my list is Robert Eggers the Northman what can I say about his latest epic other than it's a grim and brutal tale of family betrayal the afterlife but told in only the way that Eggers can show you with brutal fight sequences a kick-ass score and great performances from everyone in the cast. It's just a master force all around. There's a literal final battle in the depths of hell. And then of course, you know it's Viking lore, so the Valkyries in this movie are just worth the price of admission. This movie kits ass so hard, I don't even know how to describe it. People don't think it's an action film and it's not, but it's so much deeper than that. It's a look into what the family lineage means to you, what you'll do to fight for the people you love. It's a great movie and that's why it comes in at number 3 on my list. And coming in at number 2 on my top 10 list is Everything Everywhere All at Once. 
Where can I even begin with this film? It is a genre-bending experience that deals with family trauma, love, and a hell of a lot of multiverse jumping. And it has such a big enough heart that it actually makes you care about the characters. You care about what they go through. I never thought that a movie that made jokes about having hot dogs for fingers or being talking rots on the edge of a cliff in another universe would make me cry. But when you get to the part where Evelyn and Wayman are there in another universe thinking about what they could have done perfectly in their life and he just says in another universe i would have just liked to do laundry and taxes with you if you don't cry in that part i don't think you have emotions because that one always breaks me because it's the simple things in life the things you do with your partner that you enjoy and that make you both happy and that's just what this movie does so elegantly it just makes the simple things so much better of the way it's directed the way it's written it's just so much care from the people in charge that it makes this simple story a story that's so grand that it goes into other universes you can't miss this movie if you haven't watched it yet i don't even know if it's streaming but i do have this on blu-ray i think and it's worth every penny every time i watch this and coming in at number one is none other than matt reeves the batman his epic take on gotham city was gritty gross everything i ever wanted in a portrayal of gotham city this one from the opening scene with batman talking over the crowd saying I am the shadow if you're not locked in from that moment I don't know how you're a Batman fan the villains in this movie Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman Colin Farrell as the Penguin and let's not even talk about Paul Dano's performance as the Riddler he's menacing you barely see him throughout the movie he's usually through a FaceTime app but what he does is so crazy that you're just locked in from the moment you hear that voice the action was great the score by Michael Giacchino is a amazing specifically that car chase is probably one of the best car chases in batman movies and the cinematography by greg frazier he comes off dune to do this he's just amazing when it comes to filming the nighttime in gotham city i'm at a loss for words when i see his beautiful cinematography robert pattinson as batman is what sells me in this movie though a lot of people don't like his bruce wayne because he's broody and all that but he's a guy whose family was murdered i don't know what people want like they want him to to be all happy and go lucky all the time but i feel like his behavior is warranted for the type of hero he has to be hidden in the shadows and staying low-key at all times and i think he delivers a great performance this movie should win some oscars i hope it's my favorite movie of the year and i'm not just biased because i'm a batman fan it's truly a great three hour movie that just flies by and i don't get tired of watching it i have it on 4k i see it on hbo max doesn't matter this movie is great and it's my number one for a reason thanks for watching everyone if you want to see more content like this hit that like and subscribe button